Evolution or revolution? How do CSPs engineer and re-architect their networks to ease the transformation to digital service providers? What is this future network we're trying to achieve and what does it look like? And in terms of technology, what is the end goal for service providers? I think it's interesting um, the change that we see from, from historically um, focusing purely on, on the network to the network um, becoming still important. It's important to have that stable, reliable and most importantly secure uh, mechanism. Um, but I think we're seeing now that move much more to uh, a technology play. And I think that technology play is driven by the needs of what that network is going to deliver for our customers, whether that's a consumer or whether that's an enterprise that's maybe delivering healthcare and needs that stability and reliability uh, for patient care. And, um, and so the importance of software and building um, a platform, a technology platform, and not just the network is, is the vision for us. I think the industry will always be about the network, there is no question. But I think for the first time, uh, when you combine virtualization, you combine cloud, you combine um, new options in technology, um, as an operator, you can ask yourself a very basic question, which was never in doubt in the past, which is, do you really need to own a network uh, in the classic sense? Um, and so when you look at technology options, I think it opens up remarkable new opportunities for almost every service provider. Um, you can own the full stack of uh, value creation as it has been doing for the last 60 years, or for the first time, look at various slices of that value creation, of that value chain, and ask yourself, what business are you going to be in? And your technology choices will depend on the answer that you come up with. I think uh, more than anything, you need to move to a network that, that is um, scalable, programmable, and flexible, that allows you and gives you the choice of doing, um, you know, e either partnering further with uh, cloud service providers, for example, or actually offering your, your own services, depending on the types of services, focused at specific uh, vertical segments, especially in the 5G era, where many of these services are yet to be discovered. The inflection point when we'll, uh, will come when we stop thinking about the network as, as this physical infrastructure and we'll start thinking about the network as a programmable entity. You know, much like the way you build an application, you'll be able to build your own network, right? right? And so one of the biggest battles about making your choice, you've got to know what you are, right? So where do you maximize your value within this converging stack? Some of you are retreating, some of you are... Uh, 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 attacking, um, and you've got to say, right, I am going to make my money here. You know, we said we're going to make money on the fact that anything we can do at marginal cost on that infrastructure is good for us. Which brings us on to the not insignificant subject of paying for all of this. Where's the revenues? What are the margins? And how do we justify all of this to investors and shareholders? So the biggest challenge is really to find a new ecosystem, how we can um, make money out of that, what we are doing. Because I completely agree, um, the money is, um, the customer has to pay. Yeah. And how we split that money between us, I think that's the tricky thing. But practically, you've got to own the things that matter to you from a margin perspective. And unfortunately, my own perspective is you cannot build a successful margin-rich product if you're giving most of it to someone else. And that's the problem I know a lot of people have with, well, why don't you just work with Google or Microsoft or that? Well, all I'm doing is I'm facilitating you making money, them making money, the customer getting what he wants, and I'm taking the responsibility and getting nothing out of it. So why would I bother, right? So it's know what you want to do, and then how you make money, what's your USP, how defensible it is, and then that defines what choices you make. But it's also a very different way of thinking and asking yourself, what do I really, where do I really create value? Is it in building this full stack myself over a period of one and a half years because I think it is strategic? Or I need to move now depending on my competitive uh, situation and can then 
take this, um, these kinds of disruptive steps, moving from evolution to potentially revolution. It is a huge company. Uh, we serve lots of different sectors. So thinking about where they were going and what their digital journey was going to be and how we could then think about uh, delivering the right level of transformation, but in an unconstrained way. And it is about thinking about where's the value, where's the value to our customers, um, and, and understanding that, uh, putting your transformation forward in a way that's going to deliver the biggest value first for our customers, um, and actually setting your architecture up in a way where it is modularized and componentized in a platform sense that uh, means that you can then reuse for different scenarios as you go forward. It means that as a business, we've been able to shift from um, kind of being stuck in this legacy thinking to um, unconstrained thinking in our organisation, really thinking differently, blue sky, about what, what we might be, rather than having to worry too much about where we are today. And it's, it's making huge leaps for us, I think, in, in our transformation, thinking in that way. The technology choices you make are going to depend on what is it that you are focused on. Are you focused on running a more efficient operation? Uh, and as such, you want to move towards virtualization and cloud? Or do you really have a compelling use case or a business case for a remarkable spike in revenue growth and your technology choices perhaps will be very different? Maybe uh, we should take a leap of faith, uh, the telco that is, uh, space, right? And start thinking about investing with a clear objective in mind, right? to tackle new markets, new opportunities, right? Because, you know, the telcos keep complaining about Google and, um, you know, uh, uh, the content providers essentially riding the networks for free, right? No. But they, yet they, 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 they have an opportunity to evolve into that model, right? So uh, perhaps we need to have the same kind of flexibility as we invest in 5G technologies and the business models that are going to deliver the value to the investors. The, right? And the, the telco industry, from my understanding, is not thinking in those terms. And I think you have to be just brutally, um, just, just brutal with um, capping and bounding what, what you have from a legacy technology perspective, and then start looking to grow um, the, the new areas um, so that you can actually ultimately move to the network that we talked about that was much more software defined and you have an, an infrastructure that's that underlying that's going to allow you to uh, provide that flexibility that you need. So I, I think it's also in addition to looking at the new areas, planning in parallel in, in your transition from your 4G network to your 5G network, just really capping the, uh, the, the legacy uh, build out right, and then start growing where you know you want to get to from an underlying infrastructure perspective. So for the first time in the industry, we are seeing so many different options. Um, and you could continue to believe that network is the be all and end all, and that's the asset we want to own, the asset we want to sweat, and asset we want to maximize. It's nothing wrong in that at all. But there are also now other models available.